Okay, today's audio is brought to you by a Rode shotgun mic that I've got mounted on top of my camera because my cheap Amazon wireless lavalier mic, to be blunt, has completely shit the bed. And until I can replace it, this is what I have to work with. Uh, in today's part, we are going to be drilling the Y roller holes, these things here, okay. Uh, for my standard build, these are 70 millimeters long. Um, I spent a pile of time making sure one face was square in both directions. Uh, this is important because the, uh, the plate that mounts here holds the ball nut for the ball screw. And if it is not perfectly aligned, um, you can run into problems with the ball screw itself binding because it's passing through a nut that's at a slight angle. You might not notice it at low speeds, but you'll have jamming problems at higher speeds. Um, in this video, we're going to go ahead, we're going to drill clearance holes in the top, threaded holes in the bottom, and we're going to put some HGR20 bearings on them. And those come in a nice little green box if you got them from the three design store. And they include a six millimeter Zerk fitting, which is kind of nice. And while covered in oil, this is what they look like. And I'll kind of zoom up on that and make sure that you can see that. There you go. It has this little plastic insert. Do not remove this, okay? This is what holds the circular race of bearings in place in this while it's not on the rail. When you, it's time to put this on the rail, okay? You'll set it on there and I'll show you how it's done. But the rail will actually push this little piece of plastic out. If for any reason you need to remove this from the rail, you need to hold on to this plastic piece because what you're going to do is you're going to insert uh, the plastic as you pull it off the rail. Again, it's to keep those ball bearings in place. Uh, if you let them run free, good luck. Smart people just replace these damn things. The crazy ones try to put the bearings back in. Okay. So, for this bit, we're going to need these two assembly blocks or, or assembly alignment jigs. It's number four and it's number five. One's for the top, one's for the bottom. The wiki instructions cover what you need. It's three millimeter pilot bit, um, five millimeter drill, six and a half millimeter drill bit. Six and a half millimeter drill bit is for the top clearance hole, so you can get your Allen wrench to the top. Thread locking fluid. Good idea. Once uh, once these are on, um, you really don't need to take them off. But remember, I'm going to paint these, so I'm not going to use thread locking fluid on them right now. In fact, I may not even put the HGR20 bearings on them yet. And that is about it. So, with that, let's get started. Okay, we are going to start with the Y roller block here. Um, we're going to get four holes on the top, four holes on the bottom. Decide which side is going to be uh, the top and mark it. Uh, put an arrow that points to your squarest face. Uh, that's where we're going to go ahead and align the, uh, the jig for marking the holes. The first thing we're going to do is use the number four marking tool here and we're going to mark the bottom. So we flip it over and make sure that we're oriented so the line is facing here or the arrow is facing there make sure that's nice and firm in there and we're going to grab our marking tool and have at and now let's check to make sure we've got good marks Wow, that's really hard to see. I'm actually going to have to grab 
a magnifying glass. Yeah, okay, I found them. But boy, are they hard to spot. So we need to be real careful with these. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing on the top, but this time we're gonna use the M5 alignment tool. Because these are so difficult to see, I'm gonna mark them off camera. You see I got these nice Y rollers all nice and drilled. Doesn't that look great? We're on fucking holes. So now, I'm starting over with brand new ones. Pay close attention to the assembly guides. I will explain. Number four, it gives you this diameter of the hole you're supposed to drill at the marked location. Number five, gives you the tap you're supposed to use for the 5.5 millimeter holes you're supposed to drill, not six millimeter holes. Now we mark and drill again. Little reminder, after drilling, check to make sure that uh, your holes are lined up after you drill your pilots. Just an extra little check. Doesn't hurt anything. Takes a tiny amount of time. Will save your sanity, maybe. Okay, so now we have two Y rollers that are tapped and drilled. And now I'm gonna paint everything because we're getting to the point where we're putting ball screws on and doing this, and doing that. And I don't wanna do all that and then have to tear it apart. So this is where the paint begins. Okay, what we're gonna do now is get the HDR20 bearing mounted onto the roller. And you'll notice that it suddenly became blue. It's because I finally got everything painted through the magic of waiting a week. So yeah, let us get this done. I'm using 12 millimeter screws because, well, that's what I have handy. It specs, I think, 30, which is just stupid overkill, but these are more suitable. They're shorter. They are not, however, the cap head that uh, the instructions specify. And when you're putting this together, take care to not, uh, to not knock the centerpiece out. Come on, get in there. Doing this and being able to show it on the camera is kind of a pain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it done and then I'll come back. We're gonna put a little bit of blue thre thread locker on this thing. And you don't need a whole lot, I mean, you don't need to soak the bolt. You just need a little bit. Mosquito in the shop. And there we go, there's one. So, now I'm gonna change camera angles because I wanna show you guys how this is supposed to go onto the, uh, the rail. And first, I need to remove this thing here because we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a uh, Zerk fitting on it. One of these little goodies here. You can see that. Um, our aim, of course, is to get these on here properly. One thing I did before I painted is I marked the inside with a groove. 
Come on, where is this stupid car? There it is. I marked it on the inside with a groove. This is the square face of this roller block. So this is the part where the, uh, uh, the holder for the ball nut uh, itself will go. So I think this is four millimeter. Yep, okay. I'll turn this around and remove this. And then we'll, we'll thread that in there like so. I don't want to get too crazy tightening it down because I don't want to strip those delicate plastic threads in there. And there we go. So let's go ahead and slide this onto a, to a rail and we can do some testing. So remember I talked about this plastic insert here, okay? What you want to do is slide your carriage on here just like that. And as it goes on, you'll see it's pushing that out and just let it go ahead and do that. And there we go, now we're on the rail. Um, if I was gonna take this off, I would absolutely just reverse this entire process here. Just by holding that like so. And restoring that back into the position so it holds everything. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get it put back on there. So set that aside. If you ever need to take it apart, you'll need that. That feels kind of tight to me, but I don't know if it's supposed to have, uh, supposed to have uh, any velocity to it at all. But I'm gonna leave that there. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. I'll get that put together and then I will come back to you folks. Okay, so according to the very fine manual, what we're gonna do now is uh, start working with the ball screw. So we'll get that unpackaged. And you really want to be careful how you handle this thing because it is a precision piece of equipment. You know, no banging it around or nonsense like that. So. some scissors to open this thing up, but I don't have that, so I'll use that. Yeah, that's a, a sharp knife, said nobody ever. Huh? Hang on to that and just let that sit there. So there's two ends to this ball screw. One's threaded, one is not. Uh, we are going to be working with the threaded end first. And what we're going to do is we need one of the BK blocks, which is this thing right here. The BK block goes onto the ball screw with the, uh, this side facing out. Okay. So it'll go on there like so. And it is a very, very tight fit. We get it. Ah, uh, we got it. Okay. So just put that back together. These do come out, but they must stay in there. This had some machining swarf inside there, and that's what it was blocking. So just slide that on there like so. 
until it goes all the way in. And then we grab the ball screw nut, this little thing right here. And this goes on with that machined face or that lip facing inwards. So that'll go on like so. You want to get that nice and tight. And we're going to get a two millimeter hex wrench uh, to tighten the little set screw that's right there. Understand that you're not going to undo this. This set screw is actually going to, uh, to damage the threads on the ball screw. So you want to make sure that you don't have any play when you're actually ready to put that thing in place. And there we go. Okay. Moving on. Now we need to go ahead and put the, uh, the blocks on. There's two of these. There's one this size that's the stepper motor side. And there's another that's got a smaller opening that's the opposite of the stepper motor side. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move this ball nut a bit farther down or closer to the side we're working with here. Um, also, do not take this off. Uh, it's full of ball bearings. And uh, if you take it off, you might as well throw it away because you're not going to get it put back together. Okay. Clean that up. Make sure you got all the, the stringies off of it. And again, it's marked Y. So what we'll do is we're going to put that like that. Just slide that on there, like so. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and put it on the carriage. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to move the table a bit so I can keep my, my reasonably useful camera angle here. A little bit easier to see. It's not level, but whatever. <laughs> So what we're going to do here is we're going to pass the ball screw through like so. And we're going to just let it rest right there. This is not attached yet, by the way. So now we take this, so light it in here like that, and there we go. Oops, come on. Yeah, it'll get bolted into place. So it looks like before I throw the author under the bus, ah, I skipped a bit. I should have bolted these down, so we're just going to. Grab that and just slide that. Slide that down there a little bit. And we'll get these installed now. And using the editor, I'm just going to wave this away. Ta-da, we're all done. Okay, so back to this part. Put that back in there. Oh yeah, let's just make a whole mess of this thing, shall we? There we go, okay. So back to the fine manual. We got those put on there, we got that put on there, we got that put on there. And we've got the back plate on there. And now we're gonna go ahead and use the, uh, the five millimeter by 110. And of course, I ordered the wrong thing. So these are only a hundreds. So 
So at some point I will have to come back through and fix that particular error. Oh, I know I forgot what I needed to do. These holes are very, very tight. And I found uh, assembling the other side that I needed to, uh, oh yeah, let's make a mess out of this. I needed to uh, uh, bore them up a bit so the screws would fit. And this is actually a, a common thing with 3D printing. Um, if you Google poly holes, you'll, uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And you're after a fit. It's like that. Okay, so back to the drawing board. Grab a ball screw carefully. Put our plastic bit back on. Ah, I hate doing that. And there we go. Okay, so we just gotta line some holes up here. And start running these bolts through. Like so. Okay, so there's the bolts. And now I need nuts. Six of those. Careful, do them one at a time. Oh, I grabbed seven, not six. Counting is hard. Okay. Well, let's get this handled. Okay, so we've got those done, I think. Yeah, close enough for government work. I suspect they will be loosened and adjusted over time. So now we need to install uh, the uh, BF12, no, BK, 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 no, BF. And this thing right here is what we're going to install next this is adjustable this floats inside here okay and it's held with this little c-clip or e-clip or whatever that's a c-clip i think so you'll need a pair of c-clip pliers to install this so what we'll do here is we'll turn the magic bench to where on this end and let's see how our alignment is going to be. And what I'm gonna do here is I need to install a couple of the uh, the 50s to ensure that this end does not move. The machine has a warp. Look at that. Am I sitting on something? Let's see how close we are to our holes. Wow, we are way off. Okay, I don't know if that got lost or not. Um, if you look at that, that's how far off of straight I am. And that's bad. That's really bad. 
I figured out my issue that I had with the alignment. Um, this was misaligned by about four millimeters off axis here. And it was because um, I had a small hole misalignment in my Y roller. And I solved that by uh, opening the holes up to about eight millimeters on the bottom. It would allow me a little motion in the carriage and I got that put back together. So uh, the next piece is getting this, uh, I think it's a BF block. I think BF block. What is this? Let me look in the magic book. Yes, this is the B, <clears throat> excuse me, the BF block. Um, one of the problems with this uh, is that <clears throat> it's set up in the middle of the block. Well, uh, this end of the ball screw is retained with a C-clip. And in order to get that installed, uh, we have to adjust this bearing a bit back here. And it needs to come in a little bit. Do not tap this with it assembled. Or don't try to adjust it with it assembled because you'll apply uh, force to the bearings. Or the bearing race is inside this block here and it'll wreck them. So what I'm going to do is remove this. We'll pull the whole thing off of here a little bit or just move it away so I can tap on this gently and, uh, and get it where I need it. You can see here that this does not extend past this face. And if we look over to the other one that I have completed, you can see that the, the C-clip is there and it's in that groove and it's retaining it. So we need to make that adjustment over here. In order to do that, I have to, as I mentioned previously, move a few things around. Got those. And we'll just slide that out of there. And I need to get my, my little tappy thing here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten the bolts down on this thing. And don't tap on it too hard because you run the risk of breaking your, your mount. Okay, so we take that and we just tap it just real gently. Or not so gently, but you get the idea. And then we'll slide that back in there. And see how we clear. And that for sure is, is lined up properly. And you'll notice that when I'm moving on this thing, it tends to make that funny noise. Believe it or not, the machine is flat. The problem is, is that the floor in my workshop uh, is of such poor craftsmanship that uh, the table is on uh, a poor area of the concrete. And so the table is not level. It's only level in certain orientations. Push that on there just a little bit. Make sure that clip is, is fully seated, and it is. Now we go on to the next step. Our next task is to deal with this motor mount, okay? And this is the Y-axis motor mount. So we need that mount. We need a slip joint. That's not a slip joint. It's a joint thing. It's a shaft coupler. <laughs> My apologies. It's been a long day. It's been a long weekend. Okay, but before we can go ahead and do that, let's get these tightened down. Okay. 
You may notice this is missing bolts. This is on purpose. It's okay. I'm waiting for my properly or proper length screws to come in. And once they come in, I'll go ahead and get that replaced. So what we're doing here is getting this set up for the motor. The motor is not going to be permanently installed at this point. We are just trying to get uh, things spaced and aligned properly because we're going to be marking and drilling the holes for the mount. The shaft coupler's got a big side and a small side. Big side goes on this end. Small side, of course, goes on the motor end. Get that. Put in there like so. There we go. You want to make sure that this, this inner portion of the stepper motor actually is inside this part here. And so there's no gap. You don't want to see any gap between the face of the stepper motor and the back of the mount. This is the fun part, because we have to slowly and carefully adjust this thing and then make marks to make it fit. So what I'm going to do here is how do I want to go about that? And I'm setting this up so the shaft of the stepper motor only goes uh, through the first complete ring here on the uh, on the shaft coupler okay so i've got my tape mark here and we'll go ahead and give this a gentle tap and then i need a wood block to move that oh my dog i got my little my little handy dandy thing here Looks good. I'm gonna make sure it's seated properly. And I'm gonna put another tape, piece of tape here on the back to make sure that if it moves while I'm putting the stepper motor in, um, that it stays aligned. And I'm putting the stepper motor in because I wanna make sure that uh, the shaft coupler is aligned with the shaft and things are just generally going to fit the way they should. It's not perfect, but it's much, much better. Okay, you really can't see what I got going here. I'm gonna let's try moving things a bit. A little easier so you can see how I got things adjusted. Um, and no, I, I get it. You really can't see how how things are adjusted, but I want to tap that forward some more. I need to make that gap similar to what I've got going on the other side. There we go. Just about like that. And the gap I have is it's less than a pencil. It's three and a half, maybe four millimeters. And you want to make sure that this coupler isn't distorted, meaning that uh, the, the angle or the, 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 uh, the line between the center point is not diverging here. And you can see that just, it doesn't move very much at all. The shafts are really close together, or at least close to the center blocks. Okay, that is ready to mark and drill. And as you can see, this coupler came apart, and that's okay because it's not tightened down. And it is designed to do that a little bit. It's got that this rubber piece inside here. It's kind of a shock absorber. It takes uh, vibration and stress out of the system a little bit. Let us grab our hammer which is not this. This is a percussive adjustment tool. It's not a hammer. And there we go. You've seen me drill holes. You've seen me tap holes. 
I'm not going to make you watch that. Um, this is where I'm going to stop. Uh, the next part, I believe, is going to be the x-axis roller beam prep. That's where we take this bit and drill holes in it and put it together uh, for its use. So yeah, fun times.